Hi everyone, uh, thanks for staying. I know that it's been a long day. So, uh, uh, I'm Chaitra, I'm a developer with MySQL Optimicity, and today I'll be talking about uh, how one can use SQL with JSON. That's the safe harbor statement. Okay, so that's the agenda for today. So I'll be briefly talking about the JSON format. Then we'll move on to how uh, JSON uh, is supported in MySQL. That's followed by the new uh, JSON functions which can be used to convert JSON data to relational and back to JSON. So uh, I guess most of us know what JSON stands for. It's the JavaScript object notation and uh, the primary structural unit of a JSON is an object. Uh, I have an example here. So the object, uh, JSON object has a list of key value pairs and the keys and the values are separated by a colon and uh, the key, can, key is usually a string and then the values, are, values can be a string or a number or uh, another JSON object or a JSON array. So the second structure is the uh, JSON array so JSON array has a list of values separated by commas. So as I said, each of these value can be in turn a JSON object or a JSON array. So this, this is called nested values. So I have an example here. The first one is the JSON array having a JSON object as value. And the second one is a JSON object having a JSON array as value. So these are called nested values. We look into how we can use SQL operations on these uh, data. So, uh, we look into how, uh, what, what kind of support we have in MySQL for handling JSON data. So uh, we introduced JSON feature in MySQL 5.7. There were three parts to it. The first is the JSON data type, and the second is a set of JSON functions, which can be used to create, modify, and query the data. Uh, and the third is a generated column feature. So the generated column helps you to index a particular key in JSON um, column. So first, I'll uh, briefly look at the JSON data type. So why a separate data type? You can as well store uh, JSON data in a text column. Um, but uh, MySQL has its own data type, JSON, and uh, this is uh, stored internally as a block. So what advantage do we get having this separate data type? The first is the automatic validation of your JSON data. So when you insert a data, if the JSON data is invalid, it raises an error. So at insertion itself, you will get to know whether your JSON uh, it's a uh, valid JSON object or a JSON array. Then the second advantage is that since it is internally stored as block, we have uh, we have easy access to the keys and the value members. So you will see the difference between storing it as a text and storing it as a uh, JSON. So I have two examples here. Uh, we are creating two tables, one with a JSON object. We have inserted a JSON object, another one as a JSON array. So the first one is information about people, which has ID and the name. So I insert it like this, I mean, any SQL statement. And then you do a select start from people, you get a JSON object. Then you have a table called jobs, uh, which has job info, which is a JSON uh, column, and it has a JSON array. So you do a select start from jobs, and then you get a JSON array. So that's about the JSON data type. So we look into the JSON functions now. So there are plenty of functions. I'll just touch base on a couple of functions to create and modify and query the JSON data. Um, as, I, as you see in the previous slide, you can actually insert JSON data directly like this. Or you can use the JSON object and the JSON array functions. So the JSON object takes in a list of key value pairs, it validates the data, and then creates a JSON object for you. And uh, similarly, JSON array takes a list of values Once you have the data in the real world, the data keeps changing. So what happens if I have, okay, the old data has only ID and name, uh, but the new data also has an address. So we have like this, say for example, the new data that came in has additional member called address. Now we want to insert uh, this member into the old data. So the existing old JSON data doesn't have this address uh, member. So what do you do? You have a function to help you do that. So you update your table with JSON insert function, it takes three arguments basically. The first one being the JSON document, which needs to be updated, and the second one is the path which needs to be uh, inserted. 
So it, what JSON insert does is it searches for all the documents. If the path that you specify here is not found, then it is going to insert that path for you and then it will initialize the value with whatever you have given here. Sorry. Okay. So that, that's what JSON insert does. So now uh, if we want to uh, update this address to something that is not null basically. So you want to, you, you might want to use JSON replace. So what JSON replace does is if the path exists, so if, if this path inside your document uh, exists, then it is going to update with the new value. So you see that the, both the uh, documents have address with new norm. Okay, so the, the next one is, so once you have added the data, updated the data, you want to delete the data as well. So you can use JSON remove, which actually removes this path from this document. So you have now gone back to the old uh, format where you have only ID and name, you do not have address anymore. So this can be used and we have a couple of more functions like JSON set, which does both JSON insert and JSON replace together. So that is, uh, I mean plenty of more functions are there. So you can use based on whatever is the need for you. So I'll talk about the path a bit more once I go to the JSON table. Okay, so once you have created the data, modified the data, now we want to query the data. So there are, again, lot many number of functions to do the same, so I've concentrated on three of them here. So the first one is a JSON extract function. What, what does it do? It extracts a value for a particular path inside your document. So here I'm trying to extract this path in your JSON document info. I want to look into a, a member named name and then uh, you, you get back the value. So in this query, I'm trying to compare that value with Jane. If it is Jane, if it matches, then I'll get a 1. If it doesn't match, because the second uh, uh, document did not have Jane, so you get a 0. So uh, JSON extract can also be used, there is a shorthand for the same, for your readability purpose, you can use this as well, the aroma. So now on the left hand side is a column, JSON column, on the right hand side is the path, and then you can just do select in form. This can be used in your where process to filter out or you know uh, get the data that is required for your application. Okay, the next one is JSON contains. So JSON contains actually tells whether a particular value is found inside a document. So you have a JSON array here, developer and support engineer, which was there in our job info. So you get a one for that. So this returns a true or false whether a particular value is found in a JSON document or not. So the next is a JSON search. JSON search helps you to find a path for a particular value. So you are searching for a value, a person named Jane in a, in a JSON document, it is going to return the path for you. So you, you see that the first row, first document had uh, uh, Jane, so you will get the path for that, and the next document did not have it, so you get enough. You have a question? Yeah. Will that search every path in that JSON? Yes, document? so I'll get that. So you have um, the second document, which says one or all. So one means return immediately after you find the first path to it. So the all means it is going to search every single path and then give you all the paths to the document. Okay, so along with these functions, we have plenty more. I have listed down. So there are all these functions that you can take advantage of. So along with querying, modifying, creation and everything, you also have utility functions like JSON pretty, which will pretty print your JSON document then it is the, there's JSON valid, which is going to tell you whether it is a valid JSON document or not, so on and so forth. So I mean, there is it's it's pretty extensive for you to play around and you know see what suits you best. So that's about the 5.7 support. So now we'll move on to what's new in 8.0, the most powerful JSON function, uh, which will help you to convert JSON data into relational and then you know thereby take advantage of all the SQL operations. So. That's the JSON table function. So the JSON table function is the first table function. It's not says it doesn't return a scalar set. It actually res returns a result set, which can be used as a table. So okay, let's see. Let's go through this example. So I have this um, data about people, which has names and addresses and everything. Now I want to visualize this into a relational table like this, which has two columns: name and address, and then I have the names and then. Uh, each row being created for every uh, name that is found. Okay, 
So now what what do you get by doing this? You can start doing all the relational operations on it. I mean, uh, the SQL operations on this. So how do you do this? It's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. So you just do a select star from G1, the table where the JSON documents are present, and then write the uh, invoke the JSON table function. So JSON table function, first you need to mention from where the uh, data is coming from. So that's your JSON column. So JSON column. Then you say that if you know the path already, say in this case I know that it is there, I want to extract information from people data. So I will give the path. So I'll just talk a bit more about the path here. The, the dollar symbol or the sentinel says that that's the route, that's where I'm starting to look for. And then a dot means that it is an object, so it will be followed by a key name. So that is your member. In, inside your uh, uh, JSON column, I'm looking for a member named people. And then inside this array, everything, I want you to search for all the data inside this. So you can mention the path. Or if you do not know the path, you can just say star here itself. So then that is followed by, as, I, as you see here, we have two dimensions here created from this particular data. One is the columns, and the second is the rows. So how do you tell JSON table to create that? So you mention the columns and their paths from where to extract from. So I'm mentioning a column name, name and then the, what's the type of it, and then you give the path. Inside this document, this is the path I'm looking for. This is where you want to get the data from. So then you have the address, and then you give the path for the address. That is followed by your table name. So now once you give the table name, the alias, you can use that and then start using all the SQL operations. So, yes? What happens if you get your data that's wrong? Or you don't have a group of things that's wrong enough? Uh, this one? Yeah. Yeah, so you, you have a particular set of data types that are being supported. Uh, I think it is, it is going to uh, error out if at all there is no supported uh, data type. Say for example, our, along with the standard uh, data types, we also support date, time, and things like that. So anything that is supported, it is going to be taken otherwise. So that's about it. So what happens now? So you can start doing all the relational operations that you can leverage. So here you see that we can start using this data and then say where people dot name like John. So you will get all the rows with starting name John. So what we had previously was three rows. Now it's filtered and you get this. So this is what you can do once you convert your JSON data into relational uh, data. Okay, so not all the time your JSON data is simple and straightforward. You will have all these nested arrays, nested paths, and you want to extract this nested uh, uh, data as well into relational uh, uh, table. So uh, I have this data of father, mother, and then the marriage data. And then there is another set of data regarding the children and then age. So what I want to visualize is this, where each child inside this has a row of its own. So what do you do then? Because you you have you want the sorry. You want the father data as well and you want the children's data as well. So what do you do then? So we have something called nested paths. So in this uh, particular table you also see that there is additional information which is not present in the JSON document. So we have something called the IPs generated for each father and then there is uh, ID generated for each of the children as well. So uh, how do you do that? So I have a JSON table uh, function here. It says that I want to look into families, then followed by, sorry. Followed by the path inside this family, so here you want to look into everything. Then you specify the columns. So the first one is ID for ordinality. So once you mention this, then there is an ID that is being generated for every row that is extracted from here. Then you mention the path for the father, so you get this information. Then you also say, okay, whether the marriage status. So if there is a marriage date, then that means that the person is married, so you indicate it by one. So for the second uh, name, you do not have a marriage marriage date, so you get a zero here. So you can exist. You can use this exist path. Then you have mentioned the nested path here, so which is like go into inside this. You want to get into the children's data, 
and then create columns for each of those. So the child ID, which is again for ordinality, then you have the child's name, then you have the age. So what can you do now with this data? You again can leverage it to use all the SQL um, operations. So here I'm trying to aggregate the age of the children. So you can do that. So you, you are doing the number of children count and then you have the average age. So that's what JSON table can do for you. So, okay, so now you have the data in relational format. How do you get it back to the JSON? So you want to store the data back. So you have something called JSON aggregations that's new in eight and it is I think backported to 5.7 as well. So we have two functions, two aggregation functions. One is JSON array ag and another is the JSON object ag. So the array ag actually uh, creates an array for you aggregates all the uh, JSON objects and then creates an array for you and then the object tag creates a uh, objects aggregation. Uh, so you can use group by and then you know use the aggregations. So using this aggregation function you can put back the JSON data, I mean uh, the relational data back to the JSON format. So I have here a query which does the same. So you see that the third name that we had originally is missing here. So you have only the John Smith and John Johnson. So how do you do that? You have, you have your old JSON table uh, uh, function here. And then you, you say that, okay, I want to create an array of this using the name and address. And then I want to put it to the people's data. So it's as simple as that. So I will show you how it can be done with the nested arrays as well. So see here so what we have here is along with the original data you also have the average age that we just calculated and then the number of children as well so how do you do that you you have your json table function to extract the data in relational format and now you use average and count and then you got the age and the count and then you merge it to the family data so you use json merge patch which will merge into the old existing family data and then you get this family object, which now has, along with the children name, father, mother, and marriage date, it also has aggregated uh, data like the average age and then children, so on and so forth. So that's about my presentation. That's all I had. So if you have any questions, I'm ready. Can you turn to the page 10? 10. Okay. So from here, the bottom part. Yes. It shows that um, the first one has address now. Yes. And the second one has address New, New York. York. Is it possible to have um, the first row, uh, the first item to have? And not to have address at all. You 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 did not have address before. I'm trying to update it to have address here. So what do you want to do now? You want to delete it? Uh, yes. You delete want for uh, item number one, but not for item number two. Yes, you can specify JSON repo, and then you have a where clause. You have a where, and then specify which document to do it. So where. And you can query, right? You can use this. So where info dot uh, the name equal to say J. You don't want you, you don't want it only for J, isn't it? The first document. So you can use JSON remove and then specify a where clause here where it matches to only the first uh, document. You can do that. Okay, no, uh, actually I think, uh, okay, so JSON extract is not returning one and zero. JSON extract is actually returning a value found in that part and I have an equality clause here with J. So it, this one returns J, J for the first row and then it uh, uses it. And this one just returns true or false based on the value which is value present. Here? Yeah, the previous one. US one? Is there a way to have a 
query to find out that the first row is missing the address. So if you want to validate. If you want to uh, validate, say for which, example, then I can uh, use a JSON search, yeah. which can give you the paths. If the path doesn't return, uh, if, if the path returns null, that means that that path, uh, that path is not there. Yeah. Anyone else? I'll I'll be available, I guess, till six. If you have some more questions, I can take. Yeah. That's it. Thank you.